Data Log, Number 1, April 1st, 2015. Hello, this is Dr. Jack Bright, and I'm here to record my research for an incident that I had recently went through that changed my life. Again. It was just another day here in Site-19. I was heading to scp nelman 4s containment chamber as I had sent in a request to refine some neodymium under controlled circumstances. If you didn't know, neodymium is an extremely powerful magnet, and I wanted to see if refining it would improve or reduce its magnetic properties, and possibly give it magnetic qualities. Also, in case you never heard of it for some odd reason, SCP-914 is a machine composed of hundreds of thousands of different types of clockwork. On the front of it is a panel of a main is a panel with a mainspring that activates it and a knob that puts the machine on different settings. If you put an object in the booth labeled input and wind the mainspring, a few minutes later the object will be in the output booth after being refined. I made my way over to 914's containment chamber, being escorted by Agent Zero. When I stepped inside, I saw two cases of neodymium. One piece was just regular neodymium, and the other had copper wire wrapped around it. They were both contained in radiation-proof plexiglass. This excluded the need for protective gear. Or so I thought. I had wanted to conduct two experiments. I had set SCP-914 to fine and put the first case of neodymium in the input booth. I turned the knob and the door shut. I stood near the output booth and waited with my hands in my pocket. No one had been able to see how the machine had refined objects, but we'd stopped trying to see after we found out that it could refine objects. A few minutes later, the booth had opened up and I saw that the neodymium was glowing white. I carefully picked it up and placed it on the shelf. I set the second case in the input booth and set the machine to very fine. I turned the knob. The door had shut in a few minutes later and the output door opened and I saw that this magnet was going a light blue. I once again carefully picked up the case and set it on the shelf. I was so amazed that I didn't notice that its case was slightly ajar. I slipped on my hazmat suit and opened the first case of neodymium after making sure that there were no metals in the room. The SCP-914 was fine and its clockwork pieces were all apparently made of non-metals. I picked up the white neodymium with a set of plastic pincers, careful not to let it come into contact with my skin. I set it on the table and went out the door. A small iron ball was thrown into the room. I heard a small clink and when I looked inside, as expected, it was stuck to the neodymium. I went back in and tried to remove the ball, but it was nearly impossible. I pulled with all my strength and it finally came loose. However, the magnet flew right toward it and it stuck me right in the stomach. Stomach. With the second magnet flying out of its box right into the first one, it felt like a million volts of electricity and tiny metal shards were passing through me into my bloodstream. I screamed, I screamed quite loud when that happened, and soon I fell on the floor and passed out. Data Log Number 2 April 5th, 2015 I had woken up from my coma after four days in the medical bay. I was about to lay up until I felt a shock in my upper back. The doctor came over and told me to keep my head down. He said that I was lucky to survive, especially considering that a charge of 2,500 coulombs had passed through me. However, he then showed me an x-ray of my chest, and I saw something that gave me a metaphorical shock. I saw that I had thousands of tiny neodymium domains in my body. They were all pointing upward at the moment, toward the amulet that held my soul. The doctor told me that when the two pieces of neodymium had connected, the wire wrapped around the second piece and they had fused into a very powerful electromagnet. At the same time that it was sending voltage into my body, its domain had somehow fused with my bones. I knew what this had meant. I, I was now producing my own electric field, or sorry, electromagnetic field. I asked them if there, if there were any possible side effects and he said that there were none that he could find except for the fact that 
Any metal that comes near me would fly toward or away from me, depending on its electric charge. I closed my eyes and sighed. Great, I said, before sarcastically closing my eyes. Data log number three, April 10th, 2015. SCP-070 has broken out of the facility at Gate A. I need Dr. Bright to report to Gate A immediately. Do not let it fly off. I ran past everyone, quickly attempting to make my way to Gate A to stop SCP-070, the man with iron wings, from taking off. Over the last few days, I conducted research on myself. I had found that I can pull in or even repel objects depending on their electric charge. I discovered that I could also swap my electromagnetic field by transferring or receiving electrons. It was this day, however, that I discovered yet another one of my powers. As I ran outside, I saw that SCP-070 was hovering and about to fly off. Not on my watch. I scraped my foot on the ground a few times and grabbed one of the balcony railings. I felt the ground beneath me take my electrons, and as I grabbed the railing, I felt more electrons transfer into me. Both the ground and I had a negative charge, repelling me off the ground and allowing me to fly. SCP-070 started to fly away before I flew in front of it and rubbed its hands together. I held them out, and 070 flew toward me since its wings were made out of high-density iron. I caught it by the wings and fell back to the ground knowing that its negative charge had faded. I walked SCP-070 back to its containment chamber while not allowing its sentient chain wings to harm anyone. And now, you know why I've been acting weird so lately. The O5s are saying that I need to be kept in this body at all times. The thought of my soul having to be trapped in this body was a bit unnerving. But they said I had to get used to it, as they didn't want this body to perish. I had to live with this decision, even if I didn't really agree with it. Still, I am glad to at least have a physical form, especially one with powers and effects like these. And hey, it would even help with capturing more SCPs. So all in all, I'm fine with this decision, even if I have to keep this body for now. Thanks for, thanks for taking the time to listen, guys. End log.